Hi, I'm talking today in a video so that we can save some time in class, I hope, about one of the major assignments you'll have to do this term. The other major assignment is the paper at the end of the term, and this one is a bibliography that will help you write the paper at the end of the term. And essentially, it's an annotated bibliography, which might be familiar to you, but it's gonna be shared amongst all of the people in the class. The theory behind this is that you won't have enough time at the end of term to research thoroughly um, whatever topic you decide to write on. So for example, if you decide at the end of term that you want to write on Mall Flanders, you will have access to whatever the library's got um, full text articles to, but you won't have time to read everything that's available and you won't have time to request things from other libraries. With an annotated bibliography, you'll have the two or three articles that you might um, find, plus a couple of dozen other articles that other people have found and summarized for you. So you end up with, I'm gonna give you a huge database full of articles with information about the article's argument and about how good the article is. And I think based on past courses, people find it extremely useful when coming up with sources for their final papers. And I'm gonna walk you now through a much longer version of what I just said um, on the syllabus itself. Sorry. Sorry. Jameson's apologizing because he knows I'm really recording. Cool yeah, happen. it's really cool. Good. Okay, so this is our syllabus, and I'm clicking on annotated bibliography. And when it comes up, you'll notice that it says several of the things I just said. <clears throat> you'll compile a bibliography all term, it'll be shared amongst everyone in the class. And then the other thing that's cool is that you'll get um, a Google Drive folder with all of the articles already in it. So you won't even have to seek out the articles. Um, I'm asking you to include six to seven sources, which is considerably fewer than I have asked in previous terms. In part, that's because you won't Interlibrary loan for books, I share for books is shut down. So you won't be able to get books with the same kind of regularity that you would normally have done. Um, and it's a weird term, so we're just scaling back. And the class is big enough that this won't affect the availability of the kinds of sources you need anyway. So six to seven, <clears throat> instead of the normal like 10. Um, in total over the course of the term. So that's maybe one a week starting now. An average journal article is about 20 page. That's what you want to start shooting for if you're searching. And you need to choose articles that other people aren't annotating. I'm going to show you how to do that as well. Um, I've written the assignment assuming that you will be using journal articles and also assuming that you know how to find them. The second part of your introduction to this assignment is going to be an introduction to the librarian and how she can help us and especially how she can help us in a term when we're not doing the library lab that some of you would have been signed up for and when you're not doing face-to-face um, -face meetings with her. That's coming. Uh, Right now, I'm just gonna assume that you'll um, watch that second video and that some of the stuff that doesn't make sense maybe right now will make sense then. All of which is to say that you will find secondary sources and uh, you'll need to find full text versions, which you can do um, in different ways that Sharon will explain. You have to claim the text and you have to upload the text once you have it to Google Drive. I'll show you more about that. The annotation is three things. So when I say annotated bibliography, I mean a citation, I mean a summary of the argument, like the thesis, 
of the article and an evaluation of the text. You need to use MLA format for eighth editions. Google won't let you format these with italics, sorry. Uh, your summary should be a couple of hundred words that tells me what the theoretical orientation, relationship to the other critics, and most important, general argument of the thesis of the article is. Then you want to evaluate the text by telling me essentially how good it is, how persuasive it is, uh, what else it relates to, who might find it useful. That's a longer version of everything that is said here. There's um, the criteria that I use right here longer descriptions of sources. Um, I'm sorry, of the criteria. And then a couple of examples, and these are examples from um, an Austin course, but they are doing exactly what I've asked and they're quite different from each other. So sh they should give you a, but they're both very good. So they should give you a range of um, what I'm looking for. So it starts out with a citation in MLA format. It gives me a summary that includes important quotations from the text. It summarizes the arguments that the text makes. It doesn't just walk through the article, but it gives me examples that are maybe most important to the article's argument um, without just saying, and then the writer does this, and then the writer does this. The evaluation talks about, well, it evaluates the piece um, in the way described above. The second example does the same thing. The summary is a little shorter and the evaluation is a little longer. The summary walks through the argument without just summarizing the whole text, which is to say it doesn't go into every detail um, or every um, tries, it doesn't try to hit every paragraph or anything like that. And then the evaluation is a little longer and a little more personal, and that's as valuable for us as readers as um, a more academic evaluation up here. That's what I'm asking you to produce. The way to find these articles is the part that is coming once Sharon and I work out, it's all worked out, she has to put it online um, uh, and figure out a few different levels of how to help you with your search. Assuming that you find the stuff you're looking for, the most useful part of the syllabus to look at now is bibliography links, which tells you a couple of things. For the complete assignment look here, that's what we just looked at. Um, to claim a text or see whether someone else has claimed it, go here. This is under, where is it? I've just changed this. This is under um, claiming sources, which is a discussion topic. And it essentially walks you through exactly what to do here. The short version is you need to tell people what you're already working on so that other people don't start working on it themselves. Um, you'll notice that because she is a delightful overachiever, Janie has already claimed a certain text. So if you were looking at sources that you wanted to claim, you would search this page and all of the text Janie's, okay, so Janie, when she picks more books that she wants to work on, is just gonna keep adding them down here. And then, sorry, Janie, you'll have to clean this up later. And then she'll end up with her a whole sort of section here of what she's working on. So you can just do a quick search for the author's name or the title to find out whether anyone else is working on it. If no one else is working on it, you click reply, and then the 
Um, then you list the one, this one I am working on. So that everyone gets um, his or her own discussion topic with a list. Okay, that's how that works. It's much easier than it sounds when I try to explain it. Maybe it's more difficult. I mean, maybe it's even easier if you see what I'm doing. The other thing under bibliography links, one of the other things is uh, how to submit the annotation. And it's a Google form and it's not a hard one to use. I would suggest that you not start to enter things on the Google form unless you're done. Um, when you go to the Google form, it looks like this. I'm particularly de delighted by the heading I came up with. Um, your name is, my name is usually spelled like this. And then it'll ask you what text the article is on. It might be on two or three or four of these. It might be on none of them. Maybe it's on um, a general topic. And in which case you could put that here. Keywords here are important for people who are looking quickly. Here's where you give me the citation in MLA format. And here's where you tell me whether it's in the drive folder, where I, which I will show you um, in how to do that in just a second. Um, on open reserve and impose that I have to get rid of those because they can't be on there. So this will ask you if it's in the drive folder. The PDF is going to be named something and then you'll paste your summary and your evaluation in here. Once you submit it, it goes into the Google verse. And then if you go back to bibliography links, this doesn't show up for everyone down here. You can use the form down here if it works for you. If it doesn't, you'll have to go to the link. Um, to see what others have submitted, which is to say if you want to get a sense of what other people's annotations or um, uh, summaries or evaluations look like, you can look right here. So I didn't put any in there. Um, but here's the citation I pretended to enter. And then if I had pasted in my summary or evaluation, they would be right here and you would get a sense of the way other people in the class were writing them. Or you would get to look at um, what kinds of issues were most important critically for the books that we were reading. Okay. Lastly, how to upload articles to the Google folder. It's not complicated, assuming you're logged in with your Knox email. You just drag the PDF into the folder and then it'll show up for everyone else who goes to the folder. So right now it has, it looks like Janie's article, yep, already in here. Um, and then by the end of term, it'll have a lot of articles in here, dozens, because everyone will have been submitting them. So at the end of term, you'll end up with, I'll make this a lot prettier, but a database full of information about all of the books we've read and what critics have said about it. And then you'll have all of the articles that you might want to use for sources in the Google um, Drive. Okay, I think that this works out a lot easier once you start than it sounds like it will when I talk about it. Maybe I'll take a few minutes in class to make sure that other people who have done this before agree with me. And again, if you're not sure how to find sources, that information is coming. It um, probably will be here by Monday 
at the latest by Wednesday. Essentially, Sharon Clayton just has to build a couple of sites on the library's web webpage, which takes her a little while. She's um, updating it since we won't be on campus. Okay. If you have any questions about this, obviously we can wait until class on Monday. If you have any questions because you wanna get started over the weekend, you should text me or send me messages on Canvas. Um, if there's anything else I can do to help you find sources while we're waiting for um, information from Sharon Clayton, let me know. She's also extremely responsive to email messages, so you could email her directly. If you have questions that I can't answer, for example, or about the library's resources, but we'll get to that again on Monday or Wednesday. Okay, thank you. Jameson thanks you also, I'm sure. Yes, uh, no I don't, because I, I, I have no, I have no um, purpose in this. No, he doesn't really, so I'll just stop.